recent electric headline read, Neo deliveries reach 31,607 in Q3, but higher costs squeeze margins. After this stock took a tumble, there are strong indications that this stock might actually be a strong buy in the months to come. Why? During their second quarter report, the company marked a growth of 21% year over year. The growth margins on their vehicles fails as the cost of input kept soaring, not to mention they reported a loss that was more than any estimates could predict. First of all, inflation in the US was rising at a record rate. China was on the brink of another COVID-19 outbreak, and as they imposed restrictions, the company had to shut down two of its manufacturing plants in Hefei. At this time, they failed to produce around 7,000 vehicles, and on top of that, their deliveries failed by 5,000 EVs. In October, their deliveries were down even more, another 7.5% compared to the month before. But still, the company's stock is going to new heights even though their production fell. Why is that? The simple answer, NIQ's Q3 report. The Hefe plants are finally in operation, according to Chinese media, and the government's zero COVID policies have been a lot more relaxed. This could translate into a lot of good news for NEO and an optimistic future. While investors are waiting for the report on NEO's Q3, the company is not laying low. They stated that NEO expects to make record deliveries in the coming months of the fourth quarter. In addition, they are going to launch their ES7 SUV and their ET5 sedan. So it finally seems that the stock is going to go up in the months to come. Well, the Q3 report is out, and let's just say it's looking good. First of all, the company has delivered a record number of vehicles in their third quarter. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows for NEO even though they delivered 31,607 vehicles. Due to fewer sales of regulatory credits, their year-over-year -year margin received a sharp decline. However, their gross margin in the second quarter was 13%. In the third quarter, NEO is moving in the right direction and has increased margins to 13.3%. Aside from placing the blame on regulatory credits, the company also said that they are spending on service and charging networks for their vehicles. They are putting the money back into the business, which means that they are smashing that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, they are gearing up for the future. For example, William Ben Lee, the CEO of NEO, said that their company will support a substantial acceleration of our overall revenue growth in the fourth quarter of 2022. NEO just began shipping the ET5 sedan in September of this year, and the company put its belief in this new model. Not to mention, they are gearing up for the market with the ET7, which is supposed to rival Tesla's Model S in the coming years. In the fourth quarter of 2022, the company will deliver between 43,000 and 48,000 vehicles, and they are expecting total revenue of between 2.4 billion and 2.7 billion. We know that in quarter three, they reported a loss of around $579.9 million. This is after they delivered a record number of vehicles in a quarter since the company's founding. Despite getting $1.83 billion in revenue, they will have an adjusted loss per share of 30 cents. At the end of October, Forbes magazine weighed in with their thoughts on the stock's outlook for the coming months. The technical of NEO stock said that the stock was down 23% in just one week, and a total of 46% down in the months prior. Chinese company NEO has been experiencing some troubles, but so have other EV stocks. Recently, a lot of changes have been happening in China and investors seem worried about the outlook of the Chinese EV market. The Chinese Communist Party meeting held by President Zhang Jinping, he consolidated power at the meeting after winning the elections for the third time in a row. This caused wide uncertainty, as investors didn't know what this could mean for the private sector. Will the government increase its control of companies like it did in the past? To make matters worse, there are indications that the Chinese property sector might be over-leveraged. If this is true, a big growth factor for the Chinese economy might come crashing down. Investors are still waiting for the Chinese government to release some key economic indicators. 
This could translate into a tough few months for the EV sector and the industry as a whole. Tesla has aggravated the problem as a competitor by slashing their prices by about 9% for their Chinese market. NIO is solid when it comes to its fundamentals, especially in the past few months, while other manufacturers of electric vehicles like Xping and Li Auto saw a significant drop in their sales. NIO has shot above their average of 25,000 units per quarter. On top of that, they are increasing their presence in the EU and they are going to start delivering their vehicles to countries like Germany, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Sweden. This could increase the number of units sold in their Q4. According to Forbes, they are expecting NIO to rebound in the coming months. In the past four years, as a publicly listed company, the company has experienced returns of negative 46% 18 different times. In 13 of those 18 instances, the stock has risen in price in the coming months. So, doing a rough calculation, the company has a 7 in 10 chance of rising in the coming months. And at the start of the month of November, we noticed that the stock managed to rebound 14.7% since the steep drop of 38.7% in just one month. Compared to the other months, NEO stocks experienced their worst one yet in October. But as Forbes predicted, with sound fundamentals, the company is back on track for a strong rebound. Wall Street expected 1.8 billion in sales and NEO delivered 1.83 billion. Their profitability is up from 13% to 13.3% from the previous month. Plus, they experienced a decrease in their liquid funds. All of this and the stock is still up 12%. How do we explain this? Well, as Forbes said, NEO's fundamentals are strong, the company is making deliveries, and its products are not malfunctioning. So, investors were willing to look past the short-term setbacks, which, in NEO's case, were largely due to outside factors. First, the lockdowns and the closing of their HEFI factories, then the elections and the refusal of the Chinese government to release key economic metrics, and the raging inflation that has increased cost astronomically. As for the company, NEO is on a good path. They are making deliveries and they are selling more cars and are predicting to sell between 2.41 billion and 2.67 billion in Q4. This is probably why investors have been buying more of NEO's stock recently and have been driving their price up. Since one year ago, the stock price was hovering around the $40 and $50 mark. It's not uncommon to see its soaring price. As Forbes predicts, it has a 72% chance of going up. Check out these videos next.